Welcome back to Bearwood West Yard. I hope everyone's having a good a Christmas as you can possibly be having, and that Santa brought you all of the models that were on your wish list for this Christmas. I know the time off for many will be quite well received. I know it definitely is here, given the whole two weeks off of work uh, for me has allowed me to get on with some side projects that go on behind the scenes on the layout. Now that I'm getting my mojo back with the layout, there should be a few more bits and bobs springing up on the layout. So without further ado, let's go over some of the new additions and bits that I'm working on. The main layout related addition this Christmas is this station totem clock sign with the layout's name on it. Now this was a gift from my mum and was produced by JAF Graphics. You can find them on the internet and they've got a quite a varied range of different signs that you can buy uh, for the home and also little other bits of custom made memorabilia. It's quite a good website and the quality is excellent. So they're well worth a look and if there's any partners of modellers out there that are looking at gift ideas uh, for their modelling partners then this is definitely a can't go wrong purchase. Despite being a modern image modeler, anybody who knows me personally knows that I absolutely love anything LNSWR or London and South Western Railway. So I was quite overjoyed when I found that my girlfriend had commissioned one of her friends to paint uh, M7 number 53 in Uri Green. I absolutely love it and it makes a fine addition to all of the pictures that are above the layout. With the sheer volume of projects that are currently on the shelf that require resprays or some form of respray work, I've decided to increase my paint stripping capacity by buying these three jars. Uh, they are literally what they say on the tin. I bought all three from eBay and also the isopropyl alcohol that is in them at the minute, uh, that was all bought from eBay as well by Hexchem in Norwich. I'll post the link to all of these uh, in the description. In the two litre jar, this is the one that I've always had, I've got three uh, English China clay CDAs uh, made by Hornby. Uh, these were the October releases, October 2020. Uh, these have gone in and are going to be resprayed into EWS Red. So we can kiss goodbye to the English China Clay Blue. And we can see on the layout, hopefully in about a month or so, uh, we'll be able to see some blue hoppers running with some red, as I've got six in total. A couple of new additions to the rolling stock fleet. So I've got a pair of Heljan Rail Adventure liveried cargo wagons. I'm using these to barrier my new addition of a CMX track cleaning wagon. This wagon is an absolute beast and it's cleaned my track cleaner than a track rubber would ever have done. All of the locomotives that I've got that would have stalled in particular places, they're no longer stalling and I can run them at slower speeds than I thought was even possible. So I've got nothing but praise for this little wagon. The only downside that I would say to it is mainly just because it's American. Uh, there's no NEM adapter sockets on it. So just to be a bit prototypical, uh, I've had to go out and buy the barrier wagons so that I can run any locomotive with it and not have to worry about having a specific uh, KD fitted locomotive to run with it. That being said, it is designed for the American market and not the British market. Anyway, it's a great bit of kit and I'd recommend anyone uh, who's thinking of buying one to just go for it. I'm going to do a little video in the near future on it, so uh, be sure to keep an eye out for it if you're umming and ahhing as to whether to get one and whether to make that bit of an investment for one because they are quite a hefty price just for the single wagon. Now for another great big workbench project, 
I am working on a London and South Western Railway brick built bridge. Now this is the bridge that I've always wanted to be built for the western end of the layout. I know I had a quite a measly cardboard and wheels girder kit one uh, that was really quite horrible and nasty but this one I'm building out of a uh, 1.5mm grey board and 1mm uh, laser cut bricks that are from my own CAD file that I've gone and commissioned a company to produce for me. Each brick is absolutely tiny and I've also done the other side on the arch as well up to about the same height and so far this has taken me about three days um, of which I've spent about six hours roughly on each so about 18 hours work and I've managed to just get up to there. It's going to take a long time I forecasted up to about two weeks if I was on it on the go all the time but I'm currently taking a break as it is quite ice draining and I don't want to get bored of it and just tire myself out too much on it and burn myself out because then it will never get done. Either way, it will be done eventually and I think it will look the part even if I am going a really long way about it. In the week leading up to Christmas, I decided to make a start on the underbed board as I decided that I'd had enough of just trying to pull it out and not whatnot. So I finally decided to get it all completed. So here it is now, uh, all fully done. All I've done is gone round the sides with a bit of wood and on the end uh, put on a some hinges and a little bolt lock. That way I can quite easily unlock it and then just using a Pico re-railer I can put stock on uh, without having to worry about um, if the wheels are going to catch or not, whether they're not going to make it. And then I know that it's all secure and nothing's going to fall out. It's on six uh, rotatable uh, little caster wheels. So it can be pushed in and out. In total, there are 13 sidings. Each are about four foot in length. So I can fit roughly one MRA set or four class 66s in length. It's quite a big board and it makes up for the lack of storage that I have on the layout as I can't really have a fiddle yard as well as a marshalling yard. This enables me to store out of the box a lot of the heavier stock that I've got, whereas all the lighter stock is now on the shelves. Also in the run up to Christmas, I might have had a bit too much time on my hands as while I was getting the Christmas decorations down from the loft, I also decided to bring down my BRA or BYA steel strip carriers. I brought all nine of those down from the loft and unpackaged them as well as also my three pairs of Dapol Mega Frats from the 2015 or so release. Now I've put all of my lighter stock on the bottom shelf just so that they're easier to get at and so that if they do fall they won't be falling from that much of a distance. All of my scenic stuff which was on the bottom shelf that's now gone up a tier. Don't worry it's not in tier two although I am currently at the time of filming. Um, and then the, all of the soldering adhesives, uh, model turntables and some other laser cut and uh, mesh that's all on the other end and moved up a tier as well then up at tier three we've got all of the stock boxes and empty loco and unit boxes those are all up there and then behind the adams radial box i've got another m7 box uh, which has got an m7 in it waiting to go into london and southwestern's yuri green so a lot of projects going on, but I've only luckily only got one more. With getting the mojo back, I've decided to have another go at tackling the final two Osprey conversions. So I've started on these by going for the middle stanchions. 
unfortunately when scratch building these you can only really do the main uprights and the horizontal that's mainly because the other parts for it they're just too intricate and for all of this i'm using an rm web thread as a guide this is all uh, being written by new bryford uh, back in 2016 so this is actually quite an in-depth guide from him on how he converted a load of his uh, Cambrian salmons uh, into Ospreys. Now I'm using the Backman BDA bolsters for these, mainly because I couldn't get a hold of any Cambrian kits at the time when I started these back in summer last year. So I'm having to make do with what I've got. But I am in the process of figuring out a way of having the full length salmons as these are in real life they're actually too short and in scale they're still too short as well they're not 60 foot in length but either way I was getting tired of making these they take roughly about 20 minutes per and there's a lot of effort and aggro that goes into them as they are just a styrene square tube with some filler in the top. You can't really uh, do much for the detail on the top because when you look at the actual prototype for it, it's got that angled bit at the top. You just can't really uh, make that in scale. So I've gone and uh, worked some magic on the old CAD. So where's the mouse? There it is. And I've gone and drawn it up. Now this is using all of the dimensions for the uprights and the horizontals as supplied by New Bryford and I just put that into the CAD, just drawn it up in the 2D, gone into the 3D, extruded it all and then for the angled pieces on the top I just guesstimated it based on what looked right um, comparing the CAD with the original photograph seeing what's in proportion and going for a yeah that will do. I've also got to take into consideration also the 3D printer's capabilities so the overhanging bit on the side that probably would be a bit of a stretch too far for the 3D printer so uh, taking that into account um, that is pretty much the finished middle stanchion. I'm yet to draw up the end stanchions but I'm sure those will look as good as well, and these will be 3D printed. I often uh, like to 3D print and laser cut, and I use a local company to do all of this for me, as they charge at reasonable prices, and they're pretty good as well. They're always on time, there's no lateness about them, and that, they're really good, really professional, you get your money's worth. So I trust them, and I like to take my business to them. For getting close-up pictures like so, it's not always easy to go out and about to try and find engineering possessions or to try and just have a train spot and day out because what you're after might not turn up. So a handy little website that I found uh, when I was looking for uh, pictures when I was doing the Freightliner HIA hoppers for when I was doing their weathering, uh, this is called UK Railway Picks. It was created by Martin Reed, and it's probably one of the most comprehensive databases of pictures of pretty much every piece of rolling stock and locomotive that there is. It's an incredible website and an absolute gem. So say, for example, I want to find uh, photos of class 70s just because I want to see what the weathering on them's like. There's just endless pictures of them. Slight. It's one of the few websites where you can actually find something and build up a 360 degree image of it. So like you can see all the sides and everything so you can kind of build up a full 360 degree picture just by that. And then the RM web thread that I found uh, by New Bryford, uh, it is very simply called uh, YKA Ospreys and started 
in 2010 in the kit building and scratch building section. I also have RM Web, although I don't really use it that much. Uh, I'm on there as Bearwood West Yard, and I have two topics, mainly Jordan Hardy's workbench, and if it will load, Bearwood West Yard, Modern Image Dorset, 1990s to present. And I am a very infrequent poster, but that just reminds me that I need to actually get some stuff written up there. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've had a very good Christmas and I look forward to bringing you more content in the new year. So thank you very much for watching and happy new year.